All right. Hello, hello. Welcome to my restream of my Chulip PB that I just got earlier this afternoon. So uh, I'm, I'm not gonna not gonna go into things too much now. I'm just gonna uh, press play on this and I'll talk about things as they come. And uh, this time I'm, I'm a smart boy because I, I thought to record the splits during the run instead of having to awkwardly time things afterwards. So that'll save me some, uh, some stress. But right, there we go. So, oh, oh boy, this, oh yeah, and that was just a test, that wasn't, this is, this is the run starting, coming up now. But right, I, I do not understand why this keeps happening to me, why I keep getting amazing runs of any of any game that I run offline, because with Tulip this makes no sense. Because Tulip is more about luck than execution, in many ways. I mean, Tulip has execution in it for sure. Some of the OOB stuff is pretty finicky, you know. So mostly the glitchy stuff. And you know, optim optimizing the small things are all very important. And I, I mean, I'd say my execution in this run is fine. It's pretty good. It's not, you know, it's not super amusing. But it's it's about, you know, it's a quality that I'd say I'm happy with. But man, like with this run, you know, I, I did some attempts a few days ago on stream and I said to myself afterwards I could stream more but those attempts didn't go or that, that one attempt from that stream didn't go particularly well and I thought hey you know what I'll just do some attempts offline because the prologue is so painful the prologue is just the worst part of running this game because it's so scripted and it takes you know 14 minutes and so I set it up, I was I was doing this, I was just like watching and listening to shit in the background and just thought to myself earlier today, alright, instead of streaming this, this is what I'll do. And uh, this is my first offline attempt. This is the first one. I, I had no more than one. Which just makes this even more ridiculous. Like literally the first time, the first offline attempt I, attempt I do, the stars align. And all the luck that could go well goes well. But uh, I'm not gonna completely spoil it, but I mean, yeah, this run is really good. Like, this is probably one of the best runs of anything I've ever done. Hey, overkill. No, this is this. I'm not playing live. This is a recording. I got this run earlier today, but th thank you for the good luck being funneled back to my past self, because he he, he definitely got it. <laughs> I definitely got it. Yeah, this, this is a PB restream. Mm -hmm. Now, where was I? Where was I indeed? Uh, yeah, th this is probably one of the best runs of anything I've ever done, just in terms of how well it went, even though most of that was out of my control. Even though most of that was just good RNG, just good luck. In spite of that, oh wait, the stream chat's kind of messy, let me fix that. There we go. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, it did, it did. Passama did a really good job as well. Like it, it was a, it was a really nice uh, marathon run. I think, I think fridge was first try, as well, which is just ridiculous. Because the fridge, uh, I mean, of course, I mean, fridge is also very good in this run, but that's to be expected from a run of this, of this quality. Once again, it's like, I don't get it. I don't get how... I, I, I get how I do better on offline runs, because it's very relaxed, and it's not as if I'm super anxious and stressed on stream, like, hardly at all. 
but it is a different setting, and I always do better offline. But this game, this game is mostly luck. That is mostly what decides your time. So the fact that not not only that I got this, but that it was also my first offline attempt of this category. <laughs> You know, I mean, of course I've done any percent before on console, but this is like my first offline attempt of a of emulator. It's crazy, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that, that's just what happens a lot. I, I have to say, as someone who, n like, knows this game like the back of my hand, <laughs> it's really, it's always really interesting seeing people react to it, because I'm like, oh yeah, that would be really weird if that's your first time seeing that. But it's just, uh, I've had so much exposure to it. So many R's looking into things. Things that are glitches of the weird things, never mind the weird things themselves. But yeah, while we're in the prologue here, I can just go off about whatever the hell I want, because the prologue is just... The prologue is nothing. It is just nothing anymore. I still really like the prologue, like, from a casual perspective, but it, speedrunning it is just the worst. It's just... Takes forever. And now thanks to the um, cheat, cheat engine out of bounds testing and stuff, we know that there's basically nothing we can do about it. Because even if you could get to Suzuki, like, you, you need to actually properly enter his house if you want to kiss Onion Lady properly and end the prologue. So you'd need to find some method of making the the interactable for Suzuki's home appear earlier, otherwise the prologue's always gonna be this way. It's always the prologue will always be glitchless. It sucks, but it's the way it be. But I'm uh, trying to think if there's any other Things I want to mention about the run before the run properly starts. After the prologue. Um, I, I did notice during playing that th there wasn't any slowdown or like choppy frame rates, but it was almost like frame timing. Like some of the frame times seemed a bit off, like the, the frame pacing seemed very off. Like, just occasionally, like, like right there, I think there was a little bit of it, and then it goes back to being normal and smooth, but that, that's a very, very minor thing that most people probably wouldn't even notice. Just I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, 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 a visual audio quality snob, so I, I notice those tiny things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally know what you mean, Overkill. I feel like I run a number of games where that's generally the reaction. Though Chula probably elicits it the most. Yeah. And Chula's a pretty extreme example of it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, that's, a, that's, hmm. Hello, Yamada. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I'm acting as if I'm actually running it. That's the kind of thing I would say if I was actually in the middle of the run. <sighs> Let me just take a quick drink and think, like, what do I have to say about this run? No, I, I get you, man. But believe me, look, I, <laughs> when, when you when you're the person running it, it it gets stuff like that can get old as well. I I think the main problem I have with people just saying something is weird is that it, it sounds kind of dismissive. It's like, you know, it, it's not as if someone says, "Oh, whoa, cool, that's kind of weird." It's like people don't normally say it like that. Normally, the implication is, 
oh, this is weird, therefore I have no interest in it. Kind of thing. I mean, you know, it's whatever, they each their own, but... And if you're not interested in a game where you go around as a 14-year-old Japanese boy and kiss everyone within like a 50-mile radius, then... <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. My, my favorite reactions are the ones where, you know, people that say something to the tune of, I have no idea what I'm seeing, but please show me more. <laughs> Stuff like that. Because I, I feel like that was my first reaction to Tulip. It was just morbid curiosity. Hey, SNO. Good to see you. But yeah, very, very straightforward prologue, obviously, as it always is, but uh, what I was trying to say there was very uh, solid prologue. Not Nothing has gone amiss. Though, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I should have checked the, the button, the, uh, the traffic button. A, a part of me feels as though maybe we don't do that now? I can't remember. Because there, there was, there is a route where it makes more sense to check it in the prologue, and I think it is this one. Or maybe it was all kisses, I honestly, I can't remember. And of course, I, I did make some uh, amendments to my any percent route before starting emulator runs on it. Because obviously, since my uh, console PB, I discovered the Inoue cutscene skip in Worldly Desire. You know, going a, a layer above and uh, skipping the introductory cutscene for the for the graveyard teacher. So that's the only like discovery I think that's had any effect since then. The only other thing is different fridge strats, in the sense that I no longer, or in in this particular version of this route, I don't save scum. I don't, I don't kiss target. I just kiss Sniper. And it's actually funny how many attempts you can get for the fridge without save scumming, to the point where I feel like it's actually not something that I would just need to use for like a run like this where I'm trying to get like best time possible. I want, I need a good fridge. I don't want to waste time kissing target and then saving and you know, all, all that faff on the assumption that I'm not going to get first or like second or third try fridge. So like, I guess in like a marathon, kissing target would be a a given, you know, in, in that kind of no reset setting, but I, I feel like it's actually surprisingly consistent. Or rather, you get a, a very large number of attempts, even without relying on, uh, on saves. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Plus, I, be I believe if you do it right, you can also save extra comic reading once you get back to Long Life Town, if I'm remembering correctly. I, I know for a fact that something related to not kissing target affects when you go back to Long Life Town and therefore you, you can read like two last comics or something like that, which is always wonderful, because <laughs> the more comics you have to read, the worse life is in Tulip. Especially whenever you only have eight health. And most of your healing items go towards healing you if you get a big poopy when searching for the fridge and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah, of course the, um, the, uh, the splits that I'm using, or th that I did use during this run, are my console ones. So, emulator, of course, has a, an advantage over console in loading times, like in, in transition times. Though it's not a monstrous difference. I, I, I actually, I remember I did, I, I looked into all the different versions of Tulip and the different PS2 models and yeah, to the best of my ability to try and figure out which versions, like, loading times were the, the, the best and all that. And I can't remember how much loading times, or how much loading times save uh, on emulator. I know that these are the, the second fastest loading times. The, the fastest ones are on PS2 using an unofficial, like, hard drive expansion bay thingy. Um, something like that, anyway. I think it is... 
Is it official? I don't think it is official. It's it's a weird. There's like a weird technicality with that, but that's where you get loads that are even slightly faster than emulator. They're not by much. I think it's like not even a minute over the course of a, a 90% run. Or maybe that was a glitch this run. I honestly can't remember. Yeah, back back then, I don't know how many glitches were discovered, so beats me. But yeah, good prologue though. Sub 14 minute prologue. Even on emulator, that's really good. Or is it? <laughs> Once again, it's been that long since I did stuff on emulator, I can't remember. But sub 14 prologue, even on emulator, sounds really good to me. And then right off the bat, early Suzuki. Now that we're out of the prologue, and I this is the first run that I ever did, or that I've ever done with early Suzuki. Um, my console PB did not get early Suzuki. So yeah, uh, right off the bat, uh, got a cicada. Unbelievable luck. Ridiculous luck. Then I got a sweet potato there, and then there's the poopy. Then after this I get the frying pan, so that's really, really solid. <laughs> like, that's that's pretty, pretty damn good luck. Oh wait, no, I got another potato. I thought I got the frying pan after that. It must be an eye. Yeah, yeah. See, so yeah, that's really damn good. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but like, that's about as much as you can ask for. Can't have really any complaints about that. Oh yeah, I did get a new PB. Th this is it. We're watching it right now. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, I messed that up. I messed up the uh, the kiss buffer with Michelle, but luckily you can recover from that easy peasy. No big deal. Thank you, Seno, because you have no idea, this run, I, I'm still, I, I still, I'm a, I'm a bit shocked, because <laughs> it just goes, ex it, it goes extremely well. Like, ungodly well by Tulip standards. So yeah, my first proper early Suzuki in a run, it's like one step up right once the collision here ends, so I go back, line up, one step up right, then hold down right. And the camera got stuck there, so I, I, I shat myself for a moment when that happened, because normally that doesn't happen. And if the camera gets stuck there, then you can't tell where poor boy is, and so that could be GG, you might not be able to find Suzuki, but luckily for me, I was right where I needed to be anyway. And then of course after the cutscene, the camera's locked anyway. And I have another mini heart attack because I almost mess mess up the end of early Suzuki, but we'll uh, we'll get to that. So here you hold straight up on the D-pad. Once the camera starts to move, hold down left. And then around there you hold straight left, but I think I went, I don't know, I think I might have held down left for too long and then the camera got stuck here, so I was very, very scared, but then I, I think I went up a bit and fixed it. Alright Overkill, have a good sleep, and once again, thank you for the congrats, because I'm, I'm very, very happy with this run. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, man. So yeah, good, good early Suzuki. A bit scary in some places, and I did mess that thing up with Michelle, but the trash can lock was good enough. And good enough for early Suzuki is more than enough. So that's just over a minute and a half gained from my PB that one was on console, so a bit of time lost there, but also didn't do early Suzuki at all. I think it did still look through the trash cans though, like for the frying pan and whatnot, but I believe I just waited for Suzuki then, so... What is the new PB? I mean, for anybody watching the video right now, they can just look at the title. But those of you on the stream, I want to keep I, I want to keep it secret <laughs> until the run ends. I don't I don't want to give it away. All you need to know is it's extremely good. Far exceeded my expectations of of what I was like going for. 
Oh, poopy. Oh, yeah. The luck in this run is, like, stupid. Like, we have a couple of moments like that where something slows me down a bit, but nothing, like, completely annihilates me. So not very bad luck with that trash can, but that's a, an isolated case, and it isn't mandatory that you get something from it. This run has only one bit of actually bad luck in it. Like, something that I would say is extremely undesirable and loses a bit more time than I'm comfortable with. It only has one instance of that. And I'll, I'll probably bring it up when we get there. I, I didn't, uh, I have it in my notes that if I don't get a, a heart chocolate sweet from that trash can in the park that I should pick that up. Just as a bit of surplus. And I was gonna go for that trash can, and then I said to myself, wait, no, don't do that, because the odds of getting a cicada from that trash can are much lower than the odds of getting a frog from the trash can next to Julie's. The only problem is that the trash can next to Julie's is a bit farther out of the way, like down here. But it paid off. <laughs> it, it was a good idea because odds are I probably wouldn't have got a cicada from that other trash can. And first try, boom, I got a frog. So that, that was a very good call on my part. Yeah, now the, the rest of this is just getting the rock off the train tracks, so things don't ramp up again until we get to Whirly Desire. Also, <laughs> this is a bit of a weird thing, but I've always noticed that Yamada has like a weird bit of texture around like the bottom of his pool. And I always thought it was just something random, but it, it actually, I think it actually is meant to be a dick. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm, and I'm not just saying that, like it, it's literally, it looks like that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, this game does technically have nudity in you know? it. You know, when you go to the bathhouse, so it wouldn't surprise me. Like, it. <laughs> I, I noticed it in that cutscene there when, during the run, because, you know, I had the game full screened and it's on emulator, so it's, you know, it's like a super, you know, it's like high resolution, and I'm just like, uh, is that, like, <laughs> you know, I just, I just saw it and I was like, I, that seems like it's meant to be his. His, his, uh, giant rock kicking leg. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, so I know, like, one of the whole things in the game is, you know, sneaking out of the bathhouse naked and getting caught by a policeman, so. <laughs> Being naked in public is a feature in this game. Although people don't talk to you normally and you can barely do anything. I feel like at the game's original resolution, it would have been next to impossible to notice it. So maybe it was like a really small thing that the devs put in for a giggle. Like, would it not be funny if Yamada had his ding -a -ling? You know? But uh, 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 upscale to higher resolutions, it's definitely... it's noticeable. Can't say I was looking out for it, but it's there. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't... That, just, I'd just let Yamada do his thing. That's just how Yamada be. In life, there, there, there are mountains and valleys. And very small private areas. Pixelated ones, even. Anyway, let's let's move on from that. <laughs> let's move on from that topic.
But I'm just trying to think. I'm still trying to think, like, is there anything about the one I haven't mentioned while I still have a chance before shit hits the fan? In the next split. Uh... Well, one thing I can say is I'm probably never running this category again <laughs> unless something is discovered. Um, it's possible I could go back to console any percent, but any percent is just kind of... It would just be painful, to be honest. I mean, not that all kisses doesn't have its fair share of pain, but... All cases is more room for improvement. Any percent, like any any percent, going back to any percent on console. Like if if there was competition, I probably would. But any percent emulator, well, unless new strats are discovered, I don't think. I don't think I'm I'm going back to it, because <laughs> this this run. I'm still in shock. I still don't understand. Like, I, I get it, when I do runs offline, I'm more relaxed, kind of, so therefore, I perform, I guess, better than average, or, or at least a bit more consistently. In this game, my performance is like 25% of the run. The rest of it is all, the other 75% is what luck you get. <laughs> I mean, unless you count the rooting, like, the, the, the rooting is really what the whole thing is about. Ro rooting is... is the, uh... the biggest part of Tulip. In many ways. And there's that split. So it used to be early Suzuki and train tracks were one split, like a, a prelude split or whatever it was that I called it. But I decided there that having two separate splits for them would be a good idea, considering early Suzuki can vary a decent bit. The only real variance in train tracks is if you is whether or not you've got your damage items and stuff like that. Also, I've been very consistent with my kiss buffers. The only one I messed up was the one with Michelle, and that was because I pressed it too early. But my, my kiss buffers have been really consistent, and I'm very happy about that. It's not as if it's a, you know, a frame perfect or really hard input. It's just that the timing on it feels strange. Though luckily, you know, emulator doesn't seem to impact that. Besides the added input delay, but that, that obviously doesn't affect, you know, pressing two buttons at roughly the same time. <clears throat> but this is uh, where the strat differs from my console PB, because at that time I didn't know that I could go a layer above, I believe. And so by utilizing those out-of-bounds stairs, you're able to pop a layer above. And I think I've tried to explain the layer thing before. It's it's easiest to understand it as walking on the ceiling of the map, but in reality it's more like you're walking on a second version of the map that's invisible and on top of the bottom one, or the, the actual normal layer of the map. And it has like all the interactables, but you can like walk over things and stuff. So yeah, it, it makes getting back in bounds, you know, easy because you can just walk back in bounds from up here and then you can also walk around like boundaries like the graves which allows me to get to the grave teacher and skip his introductory cutscene like talk to him without having been introduced to him and just get the uh the love pen immediately or not the love pen the love ink immediately and yeah then i'm just doing some inventory management and then, of course, uh, while I'm up here, and we have until 3 p.m. before Hasty Wizard comes out, so we're kind of bottlenecked by him, so therefore, this is the best time to get the best potato hidden in the bushes there, and also wash my hands, since we obviously need health for doing the or doing a, a kiss buffer again in Funny Bone. No, but finding the... Uh, the, the hand wash thing is a little bit finicky. So go up around this way so as not to hit the uh, the actual cutscene trigger that we're avoiding, and then talk to uh, Mr. Inoue. 
What's his full name again? It's like Su... Su... Suburo... No, is it Suburo? Subaru? No, Suburo Maru Inoue? Something like that? I forget what his other name is. I just remember him as Inoue. Um, I don't currently have any plans for all kisses. Um, I would like to do an emulator run of all kisses. The problem with that is, you know, funnily enough, I, I mentioned uh, the input delay thing there. The the input delay on emulator makes all kisses significantly worse because of charcoal. Because uh, charcoal is an extremely tight frame window and requires a very, very fast reaction time, so it's hard enough on console, but on emulator, charcoal alone makes me very scared of even attempting that. Um, and also, we're, we're like so close to a breakthrough on all kisses, like Mika is so close to being skipped. I mean, I, I say that, I legitimately don't know if it's ever going to happen, because the one thing preventing it is so solid that I don't think it can happen, but I, I, I think at the moment it's like I want sub 4 in all kisses, and I, I could definitely get that if I did a run on emulator, because that would save, you know, more time than the, than the loads would save here, because it's a much longer run. But, uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not anytime soon, but if, if competition pops up or if some kind of breakthrough happens with Mika, then definitely. Also, a very good Hasty Wizard. Very, very good. Though, I mean, with, with Hasty Wizard there, as long as he Viva's, like, first or second time, I don't believe you lose any time from comic stuff. I think first or second is enough for you to time the comic reading correctly. Or third try for that matter, but third try would lose time. Because the, the, the ideal time to read the comic after this to get the tree in to show up is like... What is it again? It's like five to five or was it six? No, five to five I think. You know, a part of me has always wondered... Like, what if it was faster to not kiss Hasty Wizard, to go out of your way to do that and then have to run all the way back? Like, what if it just about ended up being like 10 seconds faster <laughs> over the course of the run? I mean, probably not, because uh, funnily enough, uh, right after this in Funny Bone City, where we do the Autobahn stuff there, if we weren't able to run during that, we wouldn't be able to make it back in time for the train that leaves at 2.30. So I, I think that alone would invalidate any kind of thing to that. So, no, I, I don't think that it would be faster, but it's an interesting thought. It, it, dealing with Hasty Wizard doesn't take that long, so... But yeah, I'm waiting for... Yeah, it's 5 to 5. Waiting for 5 to 5, or in or around. That way, after the comic, the train is there immediately and ready to go. Which is something I, I messed up, actually, later on in Scarecrow Field. Um, there was one point where I should have done that, I should have waited a little bit until 5 to before reading the next comic, and I didn't, which meant I had to wait longer to get on the train, so, unfortunate, but that was a very small time loss, doesn't lose that much time. Now, it's actually an optimization I've only recently started to consider as well, I hadn't really thought about it before. Right, there's Worldly Desire done. Easy peasy. And the final kiss buffer. Like, I, I said that the prologue is like the worst thing about this run, but uh, actually wait, I'll mention this in a second, because this is a bit of a new strat I have here with um, getting into the factory out of bounds. 
I line up with like the the leftmost side of the entrance there and then I hold left on the d-pad and run for exact and then like count to 20 steps like with each of Purboy's step sound effects so count for 20 steps and then I just hold up on the d-pad and that breaks me out of bounds every single time <laughs> it, it's worked every single time now so that's like an even faster method of doing it than the uh, than the consistent method I already came up with though I think because of the train it actually doesn't matter <laughs> um, how fast you do that but I feel like that's a, a more simple method a much more simple method and it also does give you that extra little bit of time so actually wait no 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 that being faster does matter because the the key is having enough time to get to the train without it leaving so if you reach the train even sooner then you're not bottlenecked by waiting for the train you're you're trying to make sure you don't miss it so no that actually does save time <laughs> I, I didn't even consider that. I'm, I'm so used to little optimizations like that in Tulip not mattering because of schedule stuff, but no, that actually does matter. And I'm only realizing it. But yeah, I see people have trouble with that. And every time I do, I, I want to say, no, it's not that hard, you just need to know the setup, but I don't want to say it because then I feel like a dick, I feel like a know-it-all. <laughs> so, I, I, that's an extremely fast and easy way to do it though so I'm very happy with that setup also small optimization here that I think I realized I think it's faster just to run up and see his introductory cutscene first before you talk to him like this because the introductory cutscene already makes you like be put up in front of him so I didn't cons I, I thought about that when these cutscenes were happening and I was like yeah that might be a little bit faster but that's like that's like one or two seconds like whatever <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry over it. Hmm. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, I was saying yeah that I think that the prologue is the worst thing about this run, and that that is still true. However, I really hate how scary the kiss buffers are, because you've got three of them. You know, with with early Suzuki, if you don't do it, like you're you're still fine. But if you mess up the one in Worldly Desire or the one here in Funny Bone then you're screwed like that's just run over unless you went out of your way to lose time to get extras to get extra damage items and healing items so that you can try more than once and even then it's terrifying because you've got a limited number of tries it's just it's so nerve-wracking and it just comes down to that one like that that little input that pressing square and triangle at the same time or I, I don't actually know if it is the exact same time. It, it feels like it is. But my, it's just nerve-wracking. And w w once you're past Funny Bone, the only thing that is, like, super scary for likely to kill the run is, uh, the fridge. And... That's the thing. I, I think there's like three holy grails for, for Tulip any percent that haven't been discovered, if they even exist. Um, one would be a way to skip the prologue, but I genuinely think that that is impossible from what we know about the prologue now. One other one is a Scarecrow field skip, because obviously through the glitches there we're able to skip the entirety of the of all the scenario stuff all, all the like main story stuff and worldly desire and in funny bone but scarecrow field we still have to do everything and it's horrible I mean, of, of course like it, it used to be much worse because of the money requirements but then the uh, the developer trigger with the infinite or the the, the permanent free passes makes money a complete non-issue but the fridge. The fridge is the worst. It is the absolute worst, and I hate it. Because it is just completely random, and the odds are not high. And it's I just it's painful. So finding a way to, to similarly skip Scarecrow Field's story. And then the final thing, and honestly the thing that I think I want the most is a way to access the hidden out of bounds triggers in the final area that are right outside the entrance in the final area 
where there are just the triggers for the doors that you could interact with. I went over it in my... I showed it off in the glitch hunting streams, and I'm, I'm still... I'm still mad about it, because the secret to completely eliminating 99% of the language barrier problem for people running the Japanese version, the cat quiz, would be completely gone and we'd save like over 6 minutes and be able to skip the, the, the Goro sequence, the court sequence, and the cat. It would be amazing. Also yeah, the first thing out of the trash can a big poopy. N not, not good luck. <laughs> no, 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 no. Poor, poor boy as well, once again. I have to remind you. In the, in the Japanese version, he is completely naked. Actually, I wonder if in the English version they noticed Yamada's uh, family jewels and cut them out. I, I, I wouldn't know, actually, but yeah. There we go. Like, what was that? Fourth try? I got, a, like, a... Or, or third try? I got a poopy, a, a, a teapot, and then the fridge. So, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding fridge. You know, you used to be first try fridge. Getting the fridge without having to die and reload your save was amazing. And th this run... <laughs> sort of... Goes in with that expectation, because... You, with the way I have it set up without kissing target, like every time you read a comic, the area reloads and you can retry the fridge. So this this route, the little uh, changes I made to the route were set up in such a way that I get like three tries before I have to go out of my way to read extra comics. So like that that's three proper tries before it starts to lose a lot of time and you know cause extra comic reads. Assuming that I don't get so many big poopies and lose all my healing items that I just end up dying prior to that, which is totally possible because this is Julep. And of course then we, after that we still have enough time to, uh, you know, wait for Sniper. It'd be nice if we didn't have to wait for Sniper, but waiting for him is a lot safer than uh, trying to time it otherwise. Though a weekly comic would cause way too much time to pass, it wouldn't be viable. He, he took his uh, his sweet time here, but it all worked out. Because we're, we're, once again here, we're kind of bottlenecked by the uh, the train. Is bottleneck the right word? I feel like it is, yeah. Because you can't lose or gain time here, no matter how. You, as long as you end up actually kissing sniper. Um, I forget what time he disappears at. The, the, the train arrives at 12, I believe, 12 p.m. So, as long as you're at the train station for 12 p.m., it doesn't matter how long it takes for Sniper to Viva. See, so in, in the old route, this is where we would go down and kiss Target, and then save, and then save Scum for the fridge. But that's no longer necessary. <laughs> And even if I didn't get the fridge there, I, I would still, I would try for the fridge one more time now. Um, and then leave, and then whenever I come back to Scarecrow Field, uh, to actually finish the, the scenario here, then that's whenever I would have to go balls to the wall and get the fridge if I haven't got it by then, or the run just dies. And because we can take this train, I don't have to read any comics once I get back to Long Lifetime. Which I believe I did in the old route. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> yeah. Um, a spoiler, I guess. Um, all of the splits in this run are golds, but that's probably because this is like the only run of this category on emulator that I've completed, and it's going up against my my console splits. It says any percent emulator on the splits, but it's just a carbon copy of my um, of my console splits. So there's an unfair advantage, but there's also a genuine advantage of this run just being genuinely better than my console run. Like both with the uh, the slightly improved route, the uh, extra cutscene skip, and you know. The, the loads add to it. If I recall, I think versus 
fat PS2 console, which is, you know, I have a, for, for my my PS2 that I run Chulip on is like a, a an older model, a fat one. Um, that versus emulator, I think it was like maybe three to five minutes at most. I don't think it was five minutes. I think, you know, five minutes is about, like five to six minutes, I think is how much time Japanese saves over English? No, that, I think that is more like five. No, that, that's four to five minutes. Sorry, I'm getting all my times messed up. Yeah, once again, I can't remember the loads, but I think it must have been like three minutes. <clears throat> if I recall. I think the, the loads over my specific console at the very least was about three minutes. So that means that at, at least almost like four minutes of the time so far is because the, the, the run is just genuinely better. And I mean, it is. Like, my, my, my console PB was pretty good, but it, it's not this. <laughs> because the, this shit's stupid. Also, I need a drink. My, my throat's getting funky. I'm yammering too much. That's hard not to. <laughs> this fucking run. <laughs> so yeah, sell both of the passes and buy the computer. And th this part here is actually uh, quite scary. <laughs> the um. The, uh, because, like, we have to run to Suzuki here whenever we wake up. After we give him one of the love items here. And we set the alarm clock for, uh, 5.45 p.m., which is 15 in-game minutes before Suzuki closes for the night and, like, forces you to leave. So, like, you barely make it to him in time. It's really close. Every time. And it, it's, a uh, it's scary. It's like, you can make it, it's not like, ridiculously precise. But it's like, you're, you, you have like a second and a half of leeway, I feel. Like, you don't have a lot of leeway. It's it's close enough to the point where it's just scary. Now here it's fine, because, you know, we haven't, you know, we, we just set the alarm. It's already open. <sighs> but uh, at this at this point, I don't know. I can't remember what I was thinking. I think I was just. Uh, uh, this is the point where I like started developing the shakes. <laughs> Like, I, after I got the fridge, I, I started to get quite nervous. Because after the fridge, that's it. Like, you're, you're, you're on a run. If you get past the fridge, then if you feel, it's entirely your own fault. Unless, of course, the run is so optimized that the small bits of RNG, time loss and time save that remain end up mattering that much. But yeah, from, from this point on, it's it's entirely on the player. There isn't that much in the way of RNG, except at the very end. Which, you know, wouldn't kill a run. It just slows it down. So all, all the major run killers are gone. Except for my own nerves. And that's, that's the scariest one of all. And yeah, th this is the mad dash. This is the uh, 15 in-game minute thing. Yeah, I got stuck there as well. Like, look at that. It's right about to hit six. It it's terrifying. I hear it. It's the, 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 that dash there to get to Suzuki is just the most uncomfortable fucking thing.
But yeah, we, we get into the love items now because it just makes sense to do it. it I guess it, it technically wouldn't lose time to do it later with the uh, with the love pen as the last love item, but uh, then again, this gets more items out of the inventory, so might actually be like a little bit faster in terms of a split second of inventory management. And of course it, it works out perfectly because at six o'clock uh, Dream Girl sets up her telescope and in order to actually make Alien crash and progress with the story of course we need to... <laughs> I don't know why I'm like walking through these things you know but I mean, I, I guess someone who's never seen a tulip run before could see this, I don't know. But yeah, I, I waited until just after six there, so that whilst time is frozen, and I'm exiting the house, that dream girl is still moving. I, yeah, I also checked the sign there. So I, I, I do that because we don't have a whole lot of time to catch the train. After this cutscene. But recently I'd been overdoing it. Where I'd been too fast, and that was making me lose time. Like, I, I was being too careful with making in-game time freeze as much as possible. So, I think I did good on this one, though. And yeah, you know what? Even even if it wasn't like a Holy Grail tier thing, and we, we, we couldn't skip the story of Scarecrow Field, it would still be really nice to be able to do it in one visit, like like we do with Funny Bone and uh, Worldly Desire, but. Because just because of how it works, it's just not possible. You, you have to go to Scarecrow Field first to speak with what's her name, Miss Iwata, I think it is. Like you, ha you have to meet the t the the sign teacher in Scarecrow Field before Dream Girl will see the UFO crash, and because of that, we have to go there once and then go back. So it'd be nice if we we didn't have to do that. So, as I mentioned before, this is the point where you would normally, if you don't kiss target, this is where you would continue to... This is where you would, you would get your third try for the fridge. Which is the last one before you'd have to then, instead of going to Alien and continuing, you'd have to run back, read a GoGo -Go comic, then run back, check the the the, uh, the trash can again, and then if you don't get it and you're still alive, run back, read a monthly comic, you know. And then if you do get it, just like finish reading one of each type of comic to get as close back to this time as possible, and then go deal with the Alien. So yeah, it, it would lose quite a bit of time after the third try, but... If it takes more than three tries, it's, you know, and you're going for, like, a, a super good time. You know, at that point, it, the one's already kind of killing itself, I guess. But at least you can keep it going with the comics. We don't get to hear this music more. Back in my day, fucking Leo, we, we had to go. To, we we got to go to the bathhouse in any percent. Now that's that's for any percent glitches and all kisses only. If I yeah, in this room we don't get to hear the bathhouse song at all because that's like the only place it plays outside of like having tea with Leo, I believe. So, only things related to Leo. 
And even if, even if, in all kisses, even if we did manage to find a way to skip Mika, we'd still get to hear that, because we still have, we would still have to normally kiss Leo, we just wouldn't get to have tea with him. Which would kind of suck, but it would also save a lot of time. <laughs> Also, yeah, um, I, pr I probably mentioned this somewhere else, but I timed it, and I think it's, like, two seconds faster to do this, to let Alien climb the tower first and follow behind him. Uh, wh which makes sense, because if you go first, he kind of has to wait a little bit while you're on the ladder. So, letting him go up first and get to his machine before you get up there, it makes sense. But for a while, I, I was not sure... What to do on that, but yeah, it's like, it's like two seconds faster. Also, the other day, whenever I was, uh, I, I practiced this, he took forever to shake his head. I, I hate the fact that him shaking his head there is random, because you need him to do it. And he can just almost not do it sometimes, it's really weird. And another little strange thing in this game, and not, 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 not a good thing in this case. And uh, right before I did this run, I believe I, I practiced this just for safety. Uh, so uh, I've definitely gotten fairly consistent in, in what to do with this. Like, it's, it's at the point where you can just sort of do it by ear. Because you, you know, whenever you've heard this enough, you know what it's supposed to sound like. So if you, if you put a wrong note, it's pretty easy to tell. And if you put the star in the wrong place. <laughs> Coca-Cola branded music. No, sorry, Heno Cola. Please, Coca-Cola Company, do not sue Punchline. They did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, I do not know what you're talking about, M. Bison, but, but yes. Kiss the monkey. I PB'd earlier this afternoon. <laughs> I I was just on. I just sat down and said to myself, right, I want to start doing some offline camps. So I'll put some stuff up in the back, you know, just listen to some stuff, chill out, and see if I can't get through the prologue using that. And then I did do that, and then my very first attempt turned into one of the best ones I've ever done. Because the stars aligned, the monkeys sang in unison, and uh, everything just went really fucking well in this run. Like, this is probably the most optimized run of Tulip I've ever done, in terms of just how well everything goes. Well, we, we, we've, we've had the fridge, and uh, it was first try. It was on my, my third pull. First try, third pull. No saves coming at all, because I never kissed target. So, riskier but faster strats. All that jazz. Ah, <sighs> it's crazy. But yeah, I'm honestly, like, I'm, I'm really, I'm really... I would say I'm proud of this run. But I, I, I didn't make the RNG good, it, it made itself good. <laughs> so it, it, it feels weird to say I'm proud of it, but I'm, I think more than proud, the word is just happy. I'm so happy that I, I won the fucking smooch lottery with this run. Because I, I, I basically, unless there's ever a breakthrough, I, I never need to look at any percent again. <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy it, but there's certainly things about it I don't enjoy. When I think I've made those things quite clear in my uh, my, my yammering so far, where does that word come from? Yammering. Where's that in the Oxford Dictionary? And for all I know, it probably is. Anyway, love pan. So now we're just going on to the end. Oh, <laughs>
Yeah, monthly and a weekly here. So yeah, by the way, in terms of a uh, comic luck, up until this point, all my comics have been fine. I haven't took damage or ripped any of them. Like, I haven't got healed either, but I've just, you know, happily read them and went on about my day. I believe this is the first and only comic that I take damage from. Yeah, and I, I don't even rip it. I didn't rip a single comic, and I took damage from one. At the end, when my health no longer matters. Although, I, I maybe should correct myself because it does matter, because I have to read one more comic when I get back to Long Life Town. So, I mean, it basically doesn't matter because I can heal myself. But, you know, if I were to read a comic with four health, then there's a chance that it could kill me. And, you know, destroy the whole run. And speaking of which, I think I mentioned this in my last stream, where I, I did that, that run that, you know, sort of, it, that died at the fridge, actually. That was nowhere near as good as this and, and didn't even do early Suzuki. Um, what was it? Uh, this is my first time, I believe, beating Tulip in one sitting without ever saving the game. Because I never saved the game in this run. The game was never saved once. So, uh, that's just more of like a little, you know, a, a cute little detail. Nothing more, but yeah, I, I, had, like, I think that might have been the only healing item I had left over the, uh, the best potato. Just because I, I wanted to make sure that... If I did take damage from that monthly comic, and with monthly comics, there's a very good chance that you will take damage, and yet I did not. Fancy that, but I, I wasn't about to risk the entire run um, ending right there, because I decided to save, you know, five or six seconds from not, from not eating that. Also, I'm kind of mad that my that my, uh, my split for Scarecrow Field there for Chim Planetary is seven seconds above one R. That annoys me. It would have been lovely if it was just 10 seconds, you know, eight seconds faster. Just give me the sub one R for that. I would have been really pleased. I mean, hey, technically I did get the love pen before one R. And it used to be I split at getting the love pen, but I changed it to be a bit more consistent. I changed it to Conductor Dinging His Bell. So, by the way, I used to do it, that would have been sub 1R, so hey, good enough for me. But yeah, that, that's all the, the love items, we're done, we just gotta, just gotta do the end of the game. And oh boy, howdy, there's, there's very few feelings like the feeling of being at the end of a very good tulip run. Especially when you weren't expecting it. Because it's this, it's this overwhelming feeling of everything has gone well. The only reason that this will not end with joy is if I fuck up. Is if I make a mistake, a miss input. If I get one of the final questions wrong. If I make the like, if I miss input during the court sequence, it's run over. Like one little mistake and. Uh, that's terrifying. I hit. I hit it so much. But good to see. You. <laughs> good to see you, Don. My fucking throat gave out on me there. How much water do I need to drink? Ah. <sighs> You're here in time for the end. I mean, and, and it goes, you know, it goes smoothly. Goes very smoothly. But uh, once again, during this, like, I, I cannot express, like, I don't think, I remember that I was like, I was pissing my pants for most of, like, the court, but after the court, when the cat came up, like, I started to physically feel my pulse <laughs> beyond my own control. It, I fucking, it's, it's one of those things where I, I can't decide if I love or hate it. it. It's so stressful, but the relief afterwards is, is just, uh, the, the joys of running a game like Tulip. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like I don't I don't know it keeps happening, but it's like wh whenever I say to myself, right, I'm going back to something. Like I normally just practice or in the case of tulip like revise my route and just you know renew my memory on like the the final quiz a little bit um and the the, the alien music stuff and then after that i'm like right it's like with tulip it's it's really just about getting good luck rather than execution so it make it makes the most sense with tulip because i just happened to get ridiculously lucky <laughs> on my first offline attempt i get a a run that might as well be perfect by my standards. Obviously not perfect. Definitely not. But I, I, I never want to try and beat this. Unless, once again, unless new stuff is found, then a different story. But it's a it's a bad habit. Of, well, I don't, I don't know if it's a bad habit. It's 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 a pretty good thing that I can just pick up a game that I've dropped for like a year and then come back to it for like four days. And after those four days, I've I've done what I wanted to do and I just drop it again. And I I think with Tulip in particular, the process of grinding it just isn't fun on stream because the, the prologue is just such a it's just so painful no i'm, I'm done with console as well <laughs> like my, my, my console time is no it's not as good as this that that run has worse luck it is not it, it has one less strat in it and it also kisses target it, it doesn't have the uh Grave Teacher cutscene skip, and it also kisses target. It's not as good of a run as this run. Um, well, I kind of messed up a little bit there. But the thing with console is the run is already it's my my, my console PB is still solid, and there's never there's pretty much never going to be competition for that unless someone who's stupid enough like me buys a Japanese PS2 and a Japanese copy of the game, which I would never blame anyone for doing, which is, which is why I, I almost care about this category more than console, because if anybody is going to run it in Japanese, it'd be better like this, because getting the official hardware to do that is something I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> I, I did it, but that's because I'm stupid. So I feel like this category in the long run is going to, you know, matter more in a strange way. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, unless like unless a console got competition, I don't have any intention of running console any percent. Once again, or a breakthrough. <laughs> if if a breakthrough is found, then yeah, of course I'll have to go back to both categories. You know, once again, the, the thing at the very start of this sequence, those out-of-bounds triggers that are just out of reach, they're just out of reach, out of bounds at the very start of this entire sequence here. We could skip all that with Goro, we can skip the chicken song, the chicken court, the cat. I, I, I can't emphasize enough, like, it's right fucking there. And if we could reach it, we'd save six minutes and the language barrier would be gone. Like, almost entirely. The language barrier would be next to nothing. Because items have, like, pictures and stuff, and you can, like, kind of remember where you put each one. And stuff like that. It's like, it would be so much better. Like, everybody could run this game in JP on emulator then. The language barrier would be, like... It's just, it would be fucking obliterated if that goddamn cat didn't exist. I, lo I love the cat. He's an asshole, but he's a lovable asshole. But goddamn it. <laughs> it's annoying. Okay, so you will recall uh, earlier in the run, some of you may recall, I mentioned that this run only has one bit of really bad RNG in it, and uh, it's this. 
This court sequence is the worst RNG you can get. The absolute slowest court where everybody in the town appears because the last person is Mrs. Plum. And uh, once again, I believe the court stuff is kind of predetermined, where depending on who comes out first, so in that case it was Leo, you, you know exactly who is going to come out next and in what order for the rest of it. So there, once again, it's like a, there's set patterns depending on who the first person is that comes out. And uh, yeah, I, I think there might be more than one worst case scenario. But I, I can now, you know, say for certain that Leo is one of them. If Leo comes out first, you're losing time. Of course, I'm not losing time here because this is an emulator run going up against a uh, up against console splits. But yeah, th this is the one part where I'm pretty pissed. But of course, I could have lost just as much time as I'm losing here to like trash cans earlier in the run, and I wouldn't have bat an eyelid because the run would have still continued and it wouldn't have seemed that that bad, so it's really not that bad. But it just sticks out to me, because I, I hate getting slow courts and I just got the worst possible RNG here. And there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, what can you do? See, I Mrs. Plum daughters your way out in last place. Uh, I can't speak to how good my cat quiz is, because at the time I was far too concentrated and scared. Um, but I know that I did get the, the longest and worst question, the weight question, so I can't say that my, my question luck was very good either, but that's, you know, kind of splitting hairs, it doesn't really cost that much time. How old is Barian? Yes, of course. I have, to, I have to tell that story. I feel like I want to just mention that, just to give that 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 context. Don, Don Donny boy here did a uh, an any percent run of this, um, which I believe it was on console, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, and I, I coached him through it. And at the very end, during the cat quiz, I got wrong how old Barian was and Dawn died because of it and lost like 30 minutes and had to like go through the, the, the end sequence of the game again and ever since then um, I'm never ever going to forget that Barian is 30 years old because that, that was horrible and it was entirely my fault <laughs> so that's that's why Dawn will not let me live that down and I don't blame him it was entirely my fault uh, yeah, well, most of it was, like, the whole thing was improvised. He did no practice beforehand. It was, it was basically your first playthrough, wasn't it? It was like, how long was it? Like, three hours, roughly? I believe. Alright, let's see. What are these questions? That's Conductor working at the thing for 20 years. So... That seems like a pretty long question. Uh, who has the longest illness name? That's Policeman. <laughs> the question is like, oh, I'm not gonna get into that. Like, I think all of you know how stupid these questions are. Just how obscure they are. And contrived. I don't need to go over the questions again. But yeah, I guess for those of you who don't know, this final quiz uh, there are 30 possible questions he can ask you, and he will ask you 20 of that possible 30 uh, in a random order. They're entirely randomized. If they weren't randomized, then maybe language barrier wouldn't be that horrible. It would still be annoying, but it wouldn't be that horrible. Also, I believe I hesitated on one of the questions there, the one about the, um, the goldfish love or whatever it was. I couldn't remember if it was like the the second one or not, but it was the second one, the one in the second row. Uh, I I memorized the questions by doing this quiz a lot, and I know which question he's asking because I can read most of it because I'm a filthy weeb. 
But really all it takes is like, you know, knowing where a few words show up in some of the questions, and then it's like, oh, okay, it's like, Goro Cinema. Okay, this is the one about who's the, who appears as an audience in the cinema, therefore the answer is Michelle, so. It's just a matter of doing stuff like that, and it's not too bad. Now, of, of course, I mean, it's bad enough in the run, because once again, if, if you get one question wrong, he deals like 16 damage to you, so we're dead. I, I can't emphasize how scared I was. I mean, maybe scared is the wrong term. I was just, I was just, oof. My heart was beating out of my chest. And now we're home free. So yeah, this, this run, this run is not only the best tulip run I've ever done in terms of luck, and maybe not execution, because this run is any percent. I feel like all kisses has more like emphasis on execution. I feel like in all kisses it's more like 50-50, at, at least compared to this. So I'd say one of my all kisses runs maybe has better execution in it on my part. But in terms of just overall quality, this is definitely my best tulip run. Definitely, like, my most optimized tulip run, for sure. And probably one of the best runs I've done, period. Or one of the most optimized runs I've done, yeah, period. Because uh, I'll check this quickly um, when the run finishes. Don't want to do it now at the risk of accidentally obscuring the uh, the video. I probably wouldn't, but I don't want to risk doing it now anyway. Um, I'll quickly check. I believe the task time is one hour and nine minutes. Which is obviously, I believe, with um, with the same type of emulator loads. Um, unfortunately though, that run does not have the Inoue cutscene skip in it. That, that task run. That's the only thing that this run has over it, I guess. But the fact that this run is that close to the task. <laughs> I mean, I, I say that close. Close within within the context of, you know, I, I am not a computer. I, I am a human. And then, I mean, I don't know, maybe that isn't that impressive. Or rather surprising. Because once again, this, this run is less about being impressive and more about praying. Human bean. Yeah, damn, I'm, I'm almost gonna be sad if there's a breakthrough now, because this run is just, like, it, it, it will be sad to see this run made irrelevant, and I still hope it does, because breaking Tulip and finding shit in it is like one of my favorite things in the world, <laughs> but god damn, this run. Like, I just fucking hell. Hey, I'm a rape, right in time for the end. Good to see you. <sighs> and uh, the only thing not to mess up now is don't hit circle. <laughs> Remember to hit triangle, because that can happen. And may it never happen again. Never it didn't happen to me, but... And... There you go. 1 hour and 18 minutes on the dot. Pretty much, pretty much anyway. Almost on the dot, pretty much on the dot. So, my... My console PB is, yeah, as you can tell by that, it's 128.13. So that's definitely a lot more time than what the loads of emulator save. So this run is is already significantly better than my console run from a from a look and I, I guess execution point. Um, and also strats once again didn't kiss target. Actually got early Suzuki uh, Inoue cutscene skip. 
all that jazz. Yep, the room is nothing but gold, but that's also, once again, because uh, those splits were from a, a, a console, maybe. Yeah, th th this song, uh, which I don't actually know what the original name of it is, but I know one of the translations is My Workplace Has a Meal Plan. A, a meal plan to uh, work against my accent there. <laughs> So, yeah, no, this song is, like, my favorite song in the entire game. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely adore this song. It, uh, it makes me tear up like a Bobby, because it's just such a genuinely wonderful song. But, yeah. Uh, once again, the song is called My Workplace Has a Meal Plan. Not meal plan. <laughs> that's, once again, that's my accent. Making that shit weird. So yeah, I don't know why that's what they call the song. It's kind of like a like a joke name, but the song itself is genuinely beautiful. I adore it. And no, I just got it earlier today, Marie. But I'm gonna submit it after this, after this stream, and I'll be ending the stream now, very soon. <laughs> I only wanted to, you know, give it some commentary. And also, whenever I put this on YouTube, I'm also going to put like a, a link to the to the raw recorded footage without my commentary on it just for the sake of it because honestly I think this run deserves it uh, I let other mods do it generally that's just kind of the you know the the, 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 the courteous thing to do so it's always good to have a second pair of eyes look over something Good job. Right, uh, yeah, I'll quickly check what the task time is. Now that the run's officially over. Uh... Fuck. <laughs> now you got me thinking about this song. I don't know what it is. It's just, ah. Uh... My, 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 my poor feelings. Why did, why does such a happy song make me so sad? Oh no, I thought it was a 109. No, the, the Tulip Task by Chigo is 1 hour, 10 minutes and 31 seconds. The, uh, the Japanese Tasser who, very, um, very much to my surprise, like I, I went out of my way and I was I, I let him know that I'd find glitches in Tulip so that if he ever wanted to use them for anything that he could know. And he immediately started working on the tasks. And uh, for any percent. He, he'd already made a task for Tulip All Kisses. Um which is which was also an extremely good run. Uh an extremely good route that I took some inspiration from, I believe. Whenever I redid my All Kisses route, and yeah, really good stuff. But yeah, we're done. We are done. Yes, the doggy. Wait, the sob is off. Oh, there we go. There's the end of the recording. <laughs> oh wait, the sum of best. Yeah. Um, no, the sum of best is on, but because all the splits in that run were gold splits, the sum of best is this run. <laughs> so, I mean, quickly before I go, if, if there was anything in that run that could have been better, the court sequence, once again, was the only bit of, like, genuinely bad RNG, like, super bad RNG. Like, just the worst RNG possible, but th that doesn't lose a huge amount of time, probably only, like, maybe... I, I don't actually know, maybe 20, 30 seconds, if I had to guess yeah that, that sounds about right Marie sounds a bit right but yeah for me for any percent I am definitely done unless some competition pops up or more 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 likely would be like maybe a breakthrough being discovered like some kind of like like a skip for scarecrow field or a, a skip for the final sequence which is as I said before, because of the whole language barrier thing, that's the thing I, I actually want more than Scarecrow Field, is finding a way to skip the final sequence, as much as I love it. As much as I love it, it's still nerve-wracking, and it would save, like, over six minutes. So, be wonderful. 
But yeah, um, I am definitely done with any percent now, unless more stuff is discovered, as I've said a million times. So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll go back to all cases at some point and get sub 4. I, I also do want to do an all cases run on emulator at some point, even if it charcoal is absolute agony. Um, yes, yeah, skipping fridge would be wonderful. That's... if, if Listen, I, I can't argue with you there. I, I want sk fridge skipped just as much as I want cat skipped. It's just that cat skipped means that pretty much everybody could run on JP if they ran on emulator anyway. Or were silly enough to, you know, buy the JP console and shit like I did. But anyway, once again, we're done. Really pleased with that run. Still shocked. Just It's stupid that I managed to get it. O offline or otherwise, it's just, it, that's just a stupidly good run. Uh, and yeah, here, here's to all kisses at some point in the future. But yeah, I'm going to leave the stream there. So th thanks for dropping by, everybody even though some of you got here pretty late. But, yeah, th this this will be up on YouTube soon enough anyway, so... Have a good one, everybody. Hopefully my next stream won't be too far away. <laughs> I, I hope it will not be, but all right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.